Hi, and welcome to C Programming Skills using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. So now we're going to look at a, another library. This is called Standard Lib, or Standard Library. Uh, this is a, another header file, another library, and we'll look at some of the functions in this library. So let's begin where we always do, where we're here in the Hello World application. And so far in the course, we've been using this standard io.h. And you may remember early in the course that if I commented this out, if I put two uh, forward slashes, which comments that out and click on run, we see that we get this warning on line number four. We'll see line number four is where the print formatted is. And when we look at that error, the warning, it's saying that it's implicitly declared, implicitly declared. And of course, this demonstration shows you that the information about this function that the compiler needs is actually inside this standard io.h. Well, it turns out as a software developer, there are lots of different header files. So a lot of different .h files. And the more of these you know, the more functions you can call and use as needed. So here, we're going to include standard lib.h, which stands for standard library. And there's all kinds of functions inside of here. We'll show just a few as we go through here. In fact, maybe I'll say hello world uh, standard lib.h. So I'm going to show the first one. It's called exit. And notice when I type exit, it says you give it a status. Well, let's give it, how about a status of zero at first. And also I want you to notice it says what it returns, because we know a function returns something. For example, um, when I type, for example, print f, when I say print f, and we see the help pop up, it says this print formatted function, print f, returns an integer value. And of course, from an earlier video, we know the integer value is how many characters it actually printed out. Well, exit is the same way. If we type exit and open, we see exit has a void. Now, what does void mean? Well, void is empty, nothing. In other words, it is possible for a function not to return anything. And indeed, exit is like this. It doesn't return anything. In fact, as you can guess, all this does is exit your program. And of course, you're looking at this and saying, well, wait a minute, don't I exit the program anyway by having a return zero? And, and you are correct. We'll say all done. In fact, why don't we use our put string just to, so we'll get, get some more practice. Let's use a put string and say all done. Okay. So exit will exit your program wherever you have to be now or wherever you happen to be. Now, right now we haven't written enough code, but later on we'll find out you could be deep inside your code somewhere and something goes wrong, and for whatever reason, you decide to exit, and you want to exit before coming to the end of main. And so that's what this does. In fact, when I click on this and run, we run, of course, don't see anything unusual because we exited with zero. Let me exit with a non-zero value, say with a one. And now notice it says the exit status is one. Or let's put, say, 42. When I click on run, exit status is 42. So at this point in the course, we really don't have a use for this exit because we know that when we get return zero, we exit from this main function. However, I wanted to go ahead and introduce this because later on, uh, there will be times you want to exit deep within your code, uh, typically for an error condition, you may want to exit. And we're, we see that this allows us to, to do that. And in fact, you saw we never got to all done, right? We saw it never printed out. When we click on run, 
it says this. And remember, a review from a earlier video, if we run this from the command line to see the result, right, Re to see the status, just do echo dollar question mark. And sure enough, notice it says 42. So remember that from the shell, and, and of course this is on a Linux system, this would be different if you're on um, a Windows system, but on a Linux system, oops, you limit, or what am I doing? You name, we're on a Linux system. Okay, so this function is inside of standard lib. Now notice if I had not included standard lib, Notice the, the green underline here. It says it's implicitly declared. Implicitly declared. Meaning you're missing a header file. So when you see this message implicitly declared, you're missing a header file. And of course, we know in this case it's the standard lib. So that's one thing we can do with it. But let's do another. Remember earlier in the videos, we did something like this. We said, oh, let me clear my screen. Suppose we said you name. And we actually wanted to do that under program control. Well, it turns out standard lib has a function called system. And notice when I put system, it has pass into it a constant character pointer, which is the command. Well, we've, we've seen now from the previous videos, a constant character pointer is a string. So what happens if I say you name here? I wonder what it will do if I say you name. And of course, when I click on run, check this out. It actually executed the you name command. Or how about this? Suppose I say cat, um, how about main dot C? So cat it out, right? Can cat nate it to the screen? Well, can we do that? from our program as well. Well, let's find out. System cat main.c. Let's give it a run. Whoa, check that out. Pretty cool. Now, we also saw it returned a result from this. So let's have a integer result. So here's a box, right? A variable called result. Let's go store an integer. I'm going to say result equals, and we call that. And, of course, we want to see what's the result. Well, we can say printf result percent %d for a decimal backslash n and show the result. Right? So we can, we can do that. In fact, let's run it. Notice when we ran this, this uname command, the result was zero. Hmm. I wonder if we do it here. Result equals, and let's do the same thing here. Let's print out the result. I'll click on run. Hey, the result zero. And many times in C programming, a result of zero is success. And in fact, that's what it's saying. You did this successfully. You did this successfully. Let's do a command that does not exist. Suppose I say result equals system no name. Let's say no no name, right? There's our no command. Let's call it no command, right? There's no command <laughs> called no command. So what we should get from this, instead of success, we should get an error. Let's give it a try. So we click and run. Hey, look at this. The result, kind of an odd value here, but notice when it tried to execute no command, it said it was not found. So when we tried to execute this, it was not found. And, and the key you should observe the result is no longer zero, right? The result is something other than zero. Okay, let's do uh, let's do one more. If I say echo dollar path, this 
is what's called the path of when you type in a command. For example, when I type in a command like you name, this is the path it searches. Or suppose we did this. Suppose we said, um, oh, let's say, how about hello equals hello world. Now I'm doing this at the shell. I'm basically typing a variable called hello and setting it to hello world. And I can actually say echo dollar hello. And what this says is show me what's inside this box. Show me what's inside of it. Of course, we see it's hello. Well, suppose we wanted to get this inside of here. Suppose we wanted to find out, for example, suppose we wanted to find out what's the value of path inside of your program. So I'm going to introduce a third function here called get env. And notice when I, when I type this function, get env, the env stands for environment. You can give it the name of an environment variable. So in this case, we could give it the name of path. Notice constant character pointer name. So that's just a string that doesn't change. We could give it that, and it would return back to us this. So what I'm going to say is, okay, let's make this path. And notice it's all uppercase, just like we're doing here. And notice when we looked at this, this help that popped up, notice it returned something we've never seen before, a character pointer. So the way you say this is character pointer. Uh, one of the things about the C language, you often use pointers to characters. Think of a pointer as your, with your index finger. You're pointing to the beginning of, of this string, which, which has a character. Well, it turns out we can access that as follows. We could say, let's have a character pointer. Oh, let's call it, how about my, or we'll call it uh, the path. Now, just like here, we declared a variable that was an integer. Here, we're declaring a variable called the path. And notice I have an underscore path. And it's a character pointer. So this is actually going to point to some characters. So I could say the path equals to and what this function is going to return is a pointer to whatever this returns. In other words, we should get this value here. To find out, we're going to do something else we've never seen before. I'm going to say printf the path colon percent s. Now we haven't seen a percent s yet, but percent s stands for string. So if we say Give it a pointer, which we say the path is a pointer to a character. And it turns out when you point to characters, you can have a string. And so the percent %s says if you give me a pointer to a character, I will print it out as a string. Let's see what happens. Whoa, look at this. The path. This path... Let me run that again. When I do main, oops, main, we see the path is, is just like when I said echo dollar path. And this is the way you as a developer, this is one of the ways you can send information into your program is by using what's called an environment variable. Uh, Let's actually, let's give one more demo. Let's say we, uh, let's say, uh, let's have a character pointer. Let's call it hello. So we have a character pointer called hello. And let's say hello equals get env. So get env hello. So we're going to have an environment variable called hello. And then we'll say printf um, hello. And let's print that out as a string. So as a string, hello. 
Notice how when we need to learn something, we learn it. So here we're calling a function, get environment. We give it a path. Now, if I run this right now, if I click on run, in fact, you know what? Let me clean up my output some here. I think I'm going to comment out. We'll take advantage of our single line comments, the two forward slashes there. Comment all three of those out. And I think I'm also comment out this uh, command that doesn't work. And I think I'll even comment out here where we have the, uh, the cat, right? We've seen that work. And I wanted to do that so when I run it, I'll have everything up here at the top. And I want you to notice that when we um, came here at this line that says hello, which we know is right here, the, the hello, I want you to notice it says when you printed it out, you got a null. Now this is a new term for us, but null means nothing. In other words, there was no string. In other words, we looked for something called hello. If I come over here and say echo dollar hello, there is nothing called hello. In fact, what I have to do to, to show this, um, let me run it from the command line. If I run it here, there is no environment variable called hello, right? It's empty. But if I say hello, and actually what we're going to have to do, we'll say export hello equals hello world. What export says is make this available to other programs when they run. And so when I export that, and now I say main, check that out. We got hello world. This is super important. This shows one of the ways you can pass information into your program is by using what's called an environment variable. This is an environment variable. By the way, you don't put any spaces around the equal sign. So if I said export, oh, let's say hello equals hello uh, env uh, variables, and then I run main again, notice now it says hello env variables. So pretty cool. In summary, in this particular video, We've looked at standard lib. We looked at three functions in standard lib. The system function, which is quite useful when you want to execute a command from your program. We also saw we could use the get env to get an environment variable from the, your uh, environment. And finally, we saw using an exit function. Remember, as a software developer, the more functions you know, the more header files and the more functions inside of those, then the more productive you will be. And that's one of the reasons we're spending a lot of time going through a lot of these header files and a lot of these functions. So thank you for making it this far. There's always more to come in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.